Dear friends, hello, hello, hello. We have a guest from Estonia and people from Estonia that don't sm smile much, mm -hmm. but if they smile, they become very, very handsome. Uh, his name is Sim Land. And why Sim Land surprised me very much? Because, you know, this young, handsome man thinking a lot about longevity and about how to live healthy life. He is the author of the books, he has a YouTube channel, and he is helping people to live long and happy life. Uh, am I correct, Sim? Yeah, well, I hope so. Ho hope so that they do <laughs> help people to live longer and healthier. But yeah, that's what I do. Like I write books and uh, create content about longevity, uh, anti-aging, uh, as well as like uh, performance and uh, like health optimization. That is wonderful. You know, uh, now I'm shooting a movie. My team is shooting a movie and it is called Forever Young. Um, it is a documentary film. And I just met a person who is 80 years old and he said uh, for him the reason, and he looks very young, the reason to look young and to be young for him is love. Because the person whom he loves, she is sick and he wants to take care of her as long as possible. And I like that story because I think, wow, love is the reason to live long for the other person. For you, I understand that you a lot, uh, not only for yourself, but for all people. So you want all the humanity uh, live longer. And that is wonderful what you're doing. My first question to you. Um, you wrote a book about stress, Stronger, Stronger by Stress. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of business people and even not business people, people who just working and all of us now surrounded by enormous amount of stress. Some people are doing revolutions. Some people are at the meetings. Some people, you know, they um, just take every news as a stress. Our parents become older. That is a stress. So COVID-19. So I, I, I don't remember that amount of stress. Maybe it was during the war only when we people had that much stress. So how we can use the stress for the good? Hmm. Well, uh, it's uh, mostly it's a matter of like your perspective of how do you look at it. So like there is always something that you can learn from like even like the worst of situations. And there's always something that you can you know, positive that you can gain from it. So it's a mo mostly like a matter of mindset of what do you focus on? Are you focusing on the bad things that are happening? Or are you focusing on like, okay, what is what is this opportunity that I can use? Because like, you know, stress is all also like an opportunity to like either change something, break uh, like bad or break old narratives or break old patterns and, you know, build something new. It's like, you know, the uh, the like a phoenix is rising from the ashes that, uh, you know, it dies, but it, it comes back reborn. And uh, our own, like, you know, human bodies are also supposed to be able to deal with these kinds of stressors uh, because um, we have encountered, like, different kinds of physical stressors in the past, like cold and famines and starvation, as well as, uh, you know, like, wars and conflict. That they're, like, very part of the human evolution. And, uh, like, you know, we've made it so far. <laughs> we've made it uh, quite a long time. And, uh, yeah, like, we shouldn't, let's say... We should we should realize that the stress is something that is actually helping us to become stronger uh, by like teaching us new skills, teaching us to be more innovative, figure out new solutions, and also just you know become uh, tougher uh, as a whole. Um, agree with you. Agree and disagree at the same time. So tell me, please, uh, number one, why you are that much into that topic of uh, stress and longevity yourself? You didn't suffer from any disease. You are not 100 years old. You are very young. So what is that? Why are you into this subject? Uh, well, uh, in terms of um, like uh, longevity and anti-aging, it's just uh, it's, it's a way of actually like, um, you know, of course, there is the aspect of being living longer and uh, being able to step, spend time with friends and family and that sort of thing. But there's also like this, let's say, productivity aspect, <laughs> like uh, the uh, all the chronic diseases that happen with aging, uh, like uh, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease. They're very, they're a huge burden on the economy and like our productivity as a species in general. So we're wasting a lot of resources trying to fix those diseases and uh, like it, like so far we've been focusing only on like the diseases itself we're focusing on like what kind of drugs can we take to cure a particular disease like, like what, what kind of drugs to be used to treat cardiovascular disease and uh hypertension and those things but uh all of those th all of those diseases are caused by aging itself 
So like the older you get, the bigger your risk of getting cancer and the bigger your risk of, you know, getting any kind of disease because your like immune system gets weaker as you get older. There's just metabolic health gets uh, worse and uh, everything gets worse uh, as you get older. So what is causing this, let's say, program to run that is causing aging? And if you try to, let's say, slow down the process and fix it to a certain extent, then you're all already curing the other diseases as well. So you're basically covering all the other uh, diseases of aging, like, you know, heart disease, uh, cancers and uh, Alzheimer's. So that is why I think it's just um, like a productivity thing as well, that uh, we as a, as a civilization are just... Um, we're of course like, like mostly unhealthy people and the vast majority of people are unhealthy and it is kind of uh, driving down like our productivity and potential as a, as a species. But uh, for you, uh, Sim, uh, I can see that you are very healthy and you didn't uh, think, God, I touched the wood, you know, I touched the wood. Uh, um, you didn't have any disease, you were doing sport, you were doing weightlifting. So why, uh, why this topic of concern to you? Well, like I don't want to get sick, or like I don't want I don't want to. It's like a preventative thing for me. Like um, I do it so that uh, I wouldn't like you know get sick and uh, put uh, any like additional burden on my f friends and family if I were to be sick, so to say. So yeah, for me, it's a it's a matter of preventative uh, healthcare. That is wonderful. So let's go about this thing about fasting. I saw your uh, interview on YouTube channel, how you were fasting 72 hours and after fasting 48 or 60 hours, you were looking better than you were <laughs> looking in the beginning. <laughs> so how all that is possible and uh, why you're doing it, why you're doing that? Yeah, well, uh, fasting or some intermittent fasting, as it's called, it's a very common, like ancient practice that has been done for yeah, thousands of years by different kinds of societies and uh, usually people do it for like uh, religious purposes or spiritual purposes but it also has a profound effect on the body and uh, the aging process so what happens during fasting is like uh, basically in a in, in a very simple way is that the body starts to clean house it starts to uh, eliminate this uh, junk material that accumulates there and you know the older we get uh, the more junk we begin to accumulate and if we never like clean it out then eventually it's just going to start to slow down the other processes, the other healthy processes that are supposed to go on. Like we get worse uh, in our cognition and we get worse in our like um, like muscle muscle function and uh, even like digestion and those things. They 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 get accumulated with junk and the fasting can is a way to kind of eliminate that and kind of eliminate these uh, old zombie cells that are also you know moving around and spreading stress and spreading inflammation in the in the body so that is one of the ways that fasting can help to kind of uh, slow down some of the aging process and uh, also treat some of the diseases what were you feeling when you were doing it because you know for us for people who never did it it sounds like a horror film you know like <laughs> you should starve to death or you should feel fatigue or you should just, but you were even participating in some events and you even said that you went to your brother to see his rock concert. So actually <laughs> you were doing a lot of stuff. So yeah. what are the feelings? How are you surviving that? Well, uh, like uh, it's initially, uh, it is hard if you're not used to it. If you're like used to eating uh, a lot uh, and very frequently, then it's uh, something uh, somewhat stressful. So you get hungry and you get the cravings and you get your mind gets uh, somewhat distracted. But I personally have been doing it, you know, for a long time and um, my body has gotten used to it and my body has also gotten very, like, efficient at uh, burning my own body fat stores for energy. So I don't get really that hungry and I don't get, like, a crash in my energy levels because I'm, like, literally burning my own uh, body fat for fuel. And uh, what, ha as a consequence of that, what happens is also this somewhat of a heightened sense of uh, mental clarity. So I, I don't really experience like any massive cravings and i don't experience this uh like fluctuations in blood sugar it's a very like a blissful state actually that uh, your brain tends to have like a little bit more energy so you're actually feeling when you are fasting even better than when you're not fasting well a, a little bit like uh, i i still don't have like um you know as much strength or power as I would have been eating. So of course, like I'm, I'm not like a vigorous in terms of uh, like my physical movements or something. Uh, but uh, in terms of like the mental well-being, then I do, yeah, 
it's a like a very else like a very yeah like a tr semi blissful state that uh, is, is somewhat enjoyable to a certain extent uh, so uh, tell me, please, uh, I read a book by Paul Breck. Maybe you heard about that and it's like explains the easy way of fasting. And uh, it's recommended to start from one day a week at last to, to feel it, because maybe if we go immediately into 72 hours, a lot of people will die after that interview right. and I don't want to do it. So really, right. how you recommend to start trying it and start doing it? You said we need to clean the house. Actually, yeah. we could not clean immediately all the house, at least how to start doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you don't need to go on a, like a long fast immediately. Um, so you can even do something that is called like time restricted eating, where you basically just skip breakfast and you eat uh, lunch and dinner. So that is also like a form of fasting and you do get like some of the benefits um, in smaller amounts. So that is that is exactly that the thing that you can start off with and, and uh, kind of uh, teach your body to uh, what is what it's like to be fasting and uh, like from there you can take it into something like you can do like once a week you eat only once a day that is also like a good good example of that and uh, after that you may want to consider doing like a 48 hour fast or a 72 hour fast but uh, yeah like you don't necessarily need to push it that, that long so fasting is only like a one single part of this anti-aging process and uh, is not inherently better than others. So, uh, you know, as long as you're still eating healthy and exercising, then you don't need to go for these like very long fasts. Like some people go for, I don't know, 10 day fasts or 70 day fasts. Uh, so th that's something I don't really think that is necessary and it may actually be more harmful than good. So yeah, like I think uh, the kind of maximum benefits that you tend to see are around like 72 hours um, and probably you don't really need to go for longer than that. And uh, I personally do it maybe like uh, three, three or four times a, week, a year, uh, these uh, seventy-two hour fasts. And so, like once every quarter is uh, probably like a good, good interval to do it. And a lot of days, I'll do more like this intermittent fasting that I just eat maybe once or twice a day. Well, this is this is nice to know, and I think it will be nice to try at least once day a week. Why not? And there are so many people who say that it will accumulate your own cells, your. Uh, uh, you know, steam cells and that that it's, you know, that it's something new and very interesting. Uh, you said that it's only one point which we concentrated. Right. What are the other points of uh, your study? What else are you doing besides this uh, using the stress right. and uh, also fasting? What else are you doing? Yeah, well, I think uh, just eating the... Uh semi-clean diet is uh, also very important. So like your food is something that you, you know, consume on a re regular basis and it is required to get all the essential nutrients that you need and also give you the energy. So uh, you can't be fasting for forever because eventually you're going to run out of energy and uh, that's where your body begins to break down. Uh, so yeah, like a good quality nutrition, which mostly just uh, like whole foods, uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, meats, uh, fish, eggs, tubers, those are the things just uh, whole natural foods tend to be the healthiest because uh, you don't want to be overeating calories either because uh, calorie excess, you know, gaining weight, uh, becoming obese, um, eating just higher calorie foods tend to also be harm, harmful for longevity and uh, animals that live longer tend to be experiencing some form of like calorie restriction. So you don't want to be, you know, g gaining, becoming obese uh, from eating too much food and too many calories. So that's why like a whole foods, you know, vegetables tend to have very few calories and uh, that's why you can, you know, be satiated from them uh, without over consuming calories. And of course, exercise is very important. One or like underrated form of exercise or anti-aging is uh, resistance training. So like, um, you know, weightlifting and uh, muscle building is very important because um, as you get older, you're like muscle mass and bone density begins to deteriorate and it's harder to like maintain muscle mass. And uh, if you have less muscle mass, then it's also um, easier to get like uh, diabetes and become obese because muscle is uh, like a metabolically active tissue. So the more muscle mass you have, then it's easier for you to stay lean, it's easier to uh, burn calories and it's easier to have like stable blood sugar levels. So building muscle throughout your entire lifetime with uh, resistance training is a very um, preventative uh, strategy for uh, anti-aging and being more functional in your later years. Because if you don't do, if you have like you know bone, uh, low bone density because of not you know strengthening the bones with exercise, then you're also like at a higher risk of osteoporosis and uh, like hip fractures. So like hip fractures, like one 
one in four people who get hip fractures that die within a year. So, so because of the hip fracture. So, uh, yeah, like older people are very um, at risk of fragile. it. Fragile. Like, they are very yeah. fragile. Oh yeah, my exactly. God! You know, uh, you know, uh, you seem sounds like a doctor. I don't know. I think you should be also doctor at the same time because you studied that topic that much. But I know that you not only doing that, that you were anthropologist before. So tell me, please, since your first profession is anthropology, uh, our diet changed for the last hundred years. Let's say why we start thinking about this dieting. I think people hundred years ago they didn't think about that. Yeah, well, of course, uh, people, you know, a few centuries ago didn't have access to like that many calories. So they were all, all always, um, you know, barely making ends meet and uh, they had to work for their food all the time. So they had to grow it and, uh, you know, uh, plow the fields and, uh, you know, that's, that sort of thing. So that they were burning a lot of calories as they were obtaining their calories. Uh, but uh, nowadays we can just eat thousands of thousand calories without burning any calories at all and that just creates this situation where we're exposed to that much nutrition but we're not using it and we're therefore our body is forced to store it as, as body fat so uh, yeah that's the biggest uh, kind of um, mismatch in terms of uh, our like the uh, evolutionary environment and the modern environment and of course there is also the discrepancy between the kinds of foods that we eat so in the past people ate, um, like, let's say, hunter-gatherers, hunter-gatherers, um, foragers, they ate, uh, like, a more higher protein diet, so they ate more meats, and uh, they also ate, you know, tubers and fruits, but they didn't eat, like, this uh, standard American diet or the Western or the junk food diet that has little to no protein as well as uh, uh, high amounts of fats and uh, sugar. So that is another example of this mismatch. What about Estonia? I think people in Estonia, most of them, they look very lean and the diet is very good, you know, it's like all people, they take care about their health a lot. I would say so, yeah, like it's definitely more than the other countries that I've uh, been to. And uh, yeah, well, the, yeah, I think uh, the Estonians, they don't, <laughs> at least like the people don't really uh, bother or they don't, uh, they don't have the means to let's say go to restaurants that often or like they don't go to the uh takeaway or takeouts uh, where like junk food restaurants that often so that is also part of the reason so like if people were to cook more of their own food then they would like also make better choices a little bit but uh, they will also get like fewer calories because in the restaurants all the foods are very um higher in calories because of like they're cooked in a lot of uh, oils uh, they're also uh, you know maybe made slightly hyper palatable with different sources and types of things so that you would be more motivated to eat so cooking your own food at home and uh yeah sticking to like whole foods this tra kind of traditional foods is uh, probably the the reason why estonians maybe is you know less less obese <laughs> than the rest of the world you know because you sound like a very talented and professional doctor you know i have the feeling you want to do exercise and fasting and eat healthy and don't go to restaurants that much because you know uh, sima is saying please follow me look at me be like me then you will be very healthy that, that is how it sounds but tell me please french people they go to restaurants and cafes all the time but most of them they also look good and by the way they live long mm. yeah yeah the uh, french uh, actually have a one reason for that or like one of one of the reasons is um the uh like the they use like different kinds of fats also in their cooking uh, so they don't use these uh, inflammatory vegetable oils like uh, sunflower oil and uh, safflower oil canola oil and uh, they use actually you know butter and lard for their cooking so the difference between them is that uh, the inflammatory vegetable oils they tend to make your body more uh insulin sensitive so or more the fat cells become more sensitive towards fat storage and they also promote like inflammation so they're worse for your health as a consequence of that as well compared to the animal fats um and uh, the animal fats are also i would imagine they're also more satiating to a certain extent so if they do eat these you know high fat you know duck or uh, liver pate and those sort of things they're also satiated from it so they get more nutrients uh, whereas the vegetable oils are mostly depleted from all the nutrients and there's also like you know the french uh the french you know culture isn't like um they don't eat overeat so they do eat like higher calorie foods or high fat foods but they don't overeat either uh so to say so it's not like that they <laughs> they don't eat uh the entire duck they may eat only like a little bit of it
when you were uh, fasting, I saw that you put uh, in your cup uh, some salt. Why you were doing it? Yeah, well, uh, you know, salt is a uh, essential mineral or sodium and uh, salt is needed for yeah like many processes like muscle contractions and uh, you know heart rhythm and uh, blood pressure so uh, while you're fasting your body tends to lose um, some of the salts uh, because you're not uh, eating any foods and you're just you know mostly excreting it um, and uh, therefore in order to comp compensate for that then now uh, you adding some salts during the fasting window can be a good good way to like prevent cramp crampings and pre to prevent like you know fatigue and lethargy. Uh, I think, Sim, that you are preparing to go in with Elon Musk to Mars. That's why <laughs> I think you are fully prepared already with all this equipment, with great mind, with knowing how to use the stress and how to use a health, healthy diet and even fast. That was really a big pleasure. I hope uh, after we do the first steps, because uh, for most of us, it's the first steps in this healthy lifestyle and fasting. We will meet with you again and tell you where are we now. Maybe then we will be ready to uh, to the next step because now it's already you know overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> because you do everything right. I think you never drink Coca Cola, no coffee, chocolates. Do you have that, <laughs> or you never eat it? Well, I, I I do like coffee is actually like a healthy drink. I think, uh, and uh, chocolate is also has some nutrients. And it ha can be health benefits. Uh, like uh, I don't drink like uh, you know Coca Cola, or the sugary version. But like yeah. Other other than that, I I don't like I do have like you know cake every once in a while on some like birthdays or uh, Christmas or something. So uh, yeah, it's not it's not gonna matter. Like what what matters most is what you do. Uh, you know, eighty percent of the time, uh, and you know the twenty percent of the time can be can be you know whatever <laughs> something that you enjoy. So once a year during Christmas time, at least we can afford one cake according to <laughs> Simland. And that's already big release. Dear Sim, thank you so much for your knowledge, for your books and for your great example. I don't think many people you know are doing that and you're doing it with big passion. It's Estonian passion, but it is a passion. <laughs> and you are very consistent in what you are doing. And that is really, that is great that you deserve such a big part of your life to that and I think this study will help a lot of people to be healthy and to know the to have the key from the good and healthy life. Thank you so much for what you are doing. It's really a pleasure to study and to know. And good luck to you, to your researchers. Thank you for being with us. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.